Hello, my name is Audrey Scanlon. I'm the Bishop of the Episcopal Diocese of Central Pennsylvania. And I welcome you to our Shaped by Faith virtual liturgy for today, the 27th of September in the year 2020, the 17th Sunday now after the Feast of Pentecost. The service today begins on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's join our voices together in the words of the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. And now, may we hear the words, God's word, in Holy Scripture. Exodus 17, verses 1 to 7. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. And Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water and the people complained against Moses and said, why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, what shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said to Moses, go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Psalm 25, verses 1 through 8. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you I have trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right and teaches his way to the lowly. Philippians 2, verses 1 to 13. 
If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Saint Matthew. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you that authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another, if we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. 
And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and he went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly, I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Well, hello. It's good to be with you today to worship with the Shape by Faith liturgy. I'm filming this today in my, this sermon in my basement, which has become my recording studio today. And so I'm glad to, glad to be with you and have a chance to reflect on, on our scripture for today. The stories, especially the story from Exodus, really resonates with me this morning. As you may know, I spent quite a bit of time hiking on my staycation this year. Uh, Glenn and I hiked on parts of the Appalachian Trail, a couple different trips that we took, backpacking and hiking several, several miles up very long hills uh, with some pretty heavy packs. I think um, mine weighed about 25 pounds, his weighed about 35 pounds. Um, and we hiked to some remote areas where we had the, the gift and the privilege of, of camping in some beautiful land along the Appalachian Trail in our diocese. And one of the things that I'm always aware of when I am hiking is the, the, um, the need for water, how critical <laughs> water is to the success of a good and a safe hiking trip. Uh, when we get water on the trail, we have an app on our phones, which tells us, um, shows the map of the Appalachian Trail, and it shows us exactly where on the trail we can find water. Of course, in the summer in Pennsylvania, a lot of the springs uh, dry up, and so it can be a little bit of a risky a risky business. So when you come across a water source, it is imperative that you take advantage of it and that you hike as um, with as much water as you can carry, really. And so we have a water filter, each of us, that we carry, and we squeeze the water that we get from the springs or from the streams into a bag, which then gets poured into a water uh, bottle, a couple of water bottles, or I have a long, narrow, uh, what's called a water bladder that fits into the pocket in the back of your backpack. And, and uh, we carry those around with us. It's amazing how much water you actually use just on a hiking trip that lasts a couple of days. We hike with dehydrated food, and so we need it to rehydrate our dinner with a camp stove. We boil the water, and add, um, add the water into the dehydrated meals. We use water, of course, for, for drinking, for quenching our thirst, for fighting off dehydration, which can be a very serious condition on the trail. We use water to brush our teeth, water to clean up, to cool off with. Um, it's amazing how much water you use in the course of a day. And so I, when I read the story from Exodus about Moses traveling through the wilderness with the Israelites, I had a sense of what it was for them when they began to panic about not having water. 
Now, this is not the first time on Moses's trip with his Israelites that they have had a need for water or, or a shortage of water. On the first leg of their journey, Israel departed from the Sea of Reeds and they went through the wilderness of Shur. And they finally arrived at Mara, where they discovered that there was water, but it was bitter. And so one of God's faithful acts was to sweeten the bitter water so it could be drunk. Later on, they traveled to Elim, where they were lucky and they found 12 springs of water, which provided for them. From Elim, the Israelites traveled to the wilderness of Sin, and that's where God provided not just water, but manna coming down from heaven, the little small chips of food that was to sustain them. And then from the wilderness of sin, they traveled to Rephidim, which is the setting for today's text in Exodus. But still, even as they arrived at today's uh, crisis point, they still don't get it. They don't get it that God will provide, that in the past, when they have panicked and been in need, that they are still provided for by God. God is a providential God who cares for them and who provides. And in the passage today, they're unable to remember God's faithfulness. And so they pin it on Moses's poor leadership. Well, I wonder what this says about the Israelites' relationship with God. And I wonder if you have ever been in a similar place, maybe not needing water, but just in need, and not being able to remember the foundation of faith that you have that is built on a lifetime of experience of abundance and fruitfulness and being cared for. So I wonder if this story resonates with you at all. Now, the lesson from Matthew that I just read, that seems to go in a little bit of a different direction. It starts off talking about issues of authority. And the parable that Jesus tells about the two sons, it's supposed to reflect back on the conflict in the beginning of the lesson when Jesus is confronted by the chief priests and the elders, and they ask him about um, his authority with by whose authority do you do these things? They want to know. And of course, Jesus responds with a question that trips them up and they can't really manage an answer. Well, I think the bottom line of the parable is that it teaches us that actions speak louder than words. The two boys in the parable, one says that he will not go to work, tells his father he's not going, but then he does. And then the one who says he will go to work, he reneges on the promise, reneges on the deal, and he doesn't go. And I think at the end of the day, what we are invited to reflect on in this parable is that actions speak louder than words. The chief priests and the elders are being told through this parable that words are cheap and it's actions that count and actions that actually lead to and that deepen belief, deepen belief. We've been talking a lot in the diocese around how it is that we are being called to be faithful, bold, faithful disciples of Jesus. And how do we get there? I believe that we get there not only just speaking the words that that Jesus would want to hear, or in this case, the father in the parable wants to hear, but then following through with the actions, the actions of our faith. And that in turn, I think, develops a deeper sense of discipleship and a, and a deeper faith. And so one feeds on the other. It's a cyclical kind of process. But as we connect to the Old Testament story, I want to crawl inside the parable just a little bit and focus not on authority or even on action, but on this theme of faithfulness. Because that faithfulness, I think, is connected to action. 
You see, in the parable, neither boy is faithful, really, to his word of what he will do. The one who goes to work when he said that he wouldn't, or the one who refused to go to work and then ended up in the vineyard. Neither of them are really faithful to their original idea. And in the first lesson, the theme is about the people's lack of trust in God's faithfulness, that they won't be cared for by God in spite of their great history that they have with God. The people's lack of trust in God's faithfulness uncovers their own unfaithfulness in this covenant relationship that they have with God. One of the scholars I was reading this week, Carl Jacobson, is a Lutheran pastor in Minnesota, and he says this. He says, there's an accusation in the parable. Some who claim to obey the Father and observe the requirements of the law fail in actuality to do so. Is this who we are, he writes, as believers, as pastors, as teachers, as vestry members, as Sunday school teachers, as Christians? Is this us? And so I wonder, we can turn to the story, turn the story to look at ourselves and wonder out loud about our own sense of faithfulness to God's promises, our faithfulness to what it is that we say that we believe, our faithfulness to the Christian tenets of love and mercy and compassion and justice. Now, even though I am homebound um, and coming to you today from my, my basement, one of the more moving parts of my ministry as a bishop is to travel around from church to church when I'm allowed to do that on a Sunday and to share in the renewal of baptismal promises as we proclaim again the words spoken at our baptisms, as we reaffirm the statements in the creed, the statements of belief about God, about Jesus, about the movement of the Holy Spirit, about the rock-like strong foundation of the church. And, and then there are those action statements that we are invited to sign on to every time we renew our vows. Now, those are words. And really what we are interested in, what I'm interested in, and I'm sure what you're interested in, is not just the words that we say when we renew the vows or when we take them the first time, but the words that lead to the actions after. And so at the end of this service, following the prayers, just before the closing, we'll have an opportunity to renew our vows together. We'll say the creedal statements together, and I will ask you the action questions. And I want you to, to just take note that the answer to those action questions, those really hard things that we say that we're going to do, the answer is, is really important. The answer is, I will with God's help. I will do these things, but I will do them with God's help. And what I love about that is that it lifts up immediately the, the importance of the covenant relationship, that we don't do this alone. We do it in community, but we also do it in our faithfulness to the God whom we love and the God whom we serve. And then finally, you will also be hearing one of my favorite hymns. Uh, it's an Irish tune. The tune name is Slain. You may know it as Be Thou My Vision. This is a beautiful tune, a beautiful melody with a text that reminds us that God is always with us in all the hours of the day, that God is loving and merciful and ever faithful. And as, as uh, the hymn tune says, waking or sleeping, God is our presence, our light. And so my friends, may God bless you 
and guide you and keep you this day and always. Amen. For the prayers of the people today, we will be using Form 3, found on page 387 of the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we may all be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We pray for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Oh, uh -huh.
conclude our time today, I want to invite you to join me in the renewal of your baptismal vows, vows that perhaps were made for you at your baptism, the vows which at confirmation or at an adult baptism you, you took on for yourself, serving as a path to walk in the way of love, in the way of Christ in this world. And so now as I read the vows, I would encourage you to respond after the creedal part, to respond to the questions of the phrase, I will with God's help. I will with God's help. And then we'll conclude with a blessing. Through the Paschal mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and all his works and promised to serve God faithfully in God's holy Catholic Church. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people, respecting the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth 
by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Now, as we conclude, I'd like to share a Franciscan blessing. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that you may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, and war, so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and to turn their pain to joy. May God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in this world so that you can do what others claim cannot be done. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen.